Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another Dokkan Battle Animation Analysis video. And ladies and gentlemen, today, as I think I talked about it in a previous video, I know I talked about it on Twitter at some point, we're going to be doing an animation analysis video on the brand new three, that's right, count them, three support memories that we got for this part of the worldwide celebration. We got the brand new Zamasu hugging, <laughs> which was, I know, a support memory that a lot of people really wanted to see. We got the Zamasu crying, and we got chunks of my returning to the future. So we're gonna take a look at all three of these today, of course, as usual. Whenever I use one of Dokkan World's videos, shout out to the boy. The link to this video as well as his channel will be in the description below. Thank you so much to the man Dokkan World for letting me use his videos for this type of thing. This was just the best place that I could find this because everything was consolidated into one instead of trying to find it from a bunch of different places. As per usual, we're going to watch through these one time through and then we will talk about them as well. As I always like to mention, I'm by no means a professional animator or anything like that. I just look at Dokkan assets all the time and I think I have a pretty good idea of what makes good animations in the game. Now, obviously, with the support memories, right, we kind of have to take into account that we're obviously not going to be sort of grading these on the same quality that we are the Dokkan Fest, right, animations and active skills and whatnot, because these are obviously meant to just be quick little things that appear at the beginning of the event, right, and then you get the little boost from them or midway through or however it is. Now, I will say... Uh, for that being the case, right, um, I did take a look at all of these scenes before watching this video as I was eating my lunch here, um, and they actually did a pretty good job representing these scenes in the form of support memory. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in the slow-mo first. We first of all have the Zamasu hugging one. As you can see, I actually just realized there's my, uh, <laughs> I was watching the farewell trunks clip right before. So, of course, for the introduction, we have Goku Black and Zamasu, where they first meet each other, right? This is technically a flashback. I kind of forgot about that before watching the scene. But this is Zamasu kind of reminiscing uh, to the boys about how he met Goku Black. And obviously, it kind of is a little bit of like a really short part of the scene, because obviously right before this Goku Black merged this, Zamasu's Gowasu, right? Um, but... It starts off when them two um, are about to handshake, right? Goku Black reaching out his hand, which looks pretty good. Um, and the unfortunate thing I will say about the support memory, right, is that, of course, there is a lot of talking that's going on in the support memory, right? By the way, I always love how they do this intro animation where they have the support memory little, like, background kind of fade out. I always think they do a good job with that, like, putting some of the assets in the foreground and the background, but... Obviously, because there's no audio for these, even though they're talking, right, it's just kind of going to be, like, stale for a second. Which, I, you know, I really wish that these support memories were voiced. I don't know if it's, like, something that they can't program or they just didn't think of it or something like that. But I really wish these support memories were voiced because that would make them not only just so much better, but it would also just make them a lot more interesting to look at. Um, I think that it would be really, really cool if they eventually did that. I don't think that they'll probably go back and do that, of, you know, with the ones that we have. But, I digress. Obviously, we have Goku Black holding his hand out, and then Zamasu reaches for it. And as Zamasu is reaching for his hand, they kind of zoom in, which is a good way to cut in between shots to kind of get Zamasu's hand a little bit closer. And they actually do a pretty good job animating the actual grabbing of their two hands, right, with their hands actually like clasping around each other like this. It's pretty well animated. It is a little bit like kind of jarring to see, right? In the way that they kind of like move where, you know, they sort of are like slowly clasping their hands and then bam, right? They kind of grab it. But to be fair, I guess that's how a handshake works, right? So to be fair, I think it looks good, right? I think it looks good. And then obviously we cut to the scene of both of them looking at each other, which is cool. They obviously have them kind of like moving a little bit. I really like the asset of Goku Black and even have him go down a little bit, which by the way, shout out to the boy Fizz Trunks, did not have hair movement basically anywhere. And even the support memory has the earring move and the hair move when Goku Black brings his head down a little bit. 
Um, and then obviously we have Zamasu as well, kind of also doing the funny little turn thing with his hair also moving in the Quatar earrings. And I love this bit of perspective with Goku Black and Zamasu where it's like you're looking over the other person's shoulder and you can see the blurry image of the, you know, person that you're looking over their shoulder, how it would look if you were kind of in this or if you had a camera there, right? Even Zamasu is also a little blurry. Funny enough, because of Zamasu's like big shoulder pads here, he kind of blocks a lot more of Goku Black uh, than Goku Black blocks of Samasu, even though he does have his shoulder there in shot but this is really cool and obviously this is how dragon ball super did it but it's always awesome to have more interesting angles like this rather than you know just like it being Zamasu's face or something like that now the only thing that i will say is a bit of a shame about this support memory is i think that this part looks good right where they both kind of hug each other it looks very funny <laughs> where they both go into each other's grasp the only thing that is a little bit unfortunate is this kind of choppy how they move towards each other. And interestingly enough, right, if we go back to the beginning, like, these assets, right, when they're first giving each other the handshake, are a lot more high quality than these assets right here. You can see from jumping from that to that, that unfortunately, they use a lot lower quality of the part where they actually hug each other. I mean, I guess that's fine. It is a support memory, but this definitely looks a little bit more of like a background asset or like kind of like a sprite, sort of that style. Obviously not the same like two pixels on the screen of a sprite, but it's sort of that same like, you know, line thickness and, um, you know, the basically like quality of the um, art itself, right? But nonetheless, even though it is a little bit choppy how they move together, I think it's fine. Um, but the only thing that is definitely a shame is that they don't spin around. Obviously, this scene is pretty iconic because they kind of have the camera spin around the both of them, right? Going around one's back to the next one's back and showing their faces with a little bit of rotoscoping. I guess they're kind of trying to sort of give you that feeling here, but to be fair, this also happens right before the spin. Um, so it is a little bit unfortunate that they didn't animate them, um, you know, actually like, you know, having the little bit of rotoscoping around the end of the scene because that is kind of what this scene is known for. It's just a very funny um, moment. But... I digress, still a very good looking support memory in my opinion, and we now move on to the Zamasu crying support memory. This is the one that I was personally the most excited about because I mean, how could you not be excited for this? It's so funny, bro. So yeah, we have Zamasu come into frame. I will say when I first saw this asset, I thought that Zamasu, oops, looked a little bit weird, but upon going back and watching the clip, this was actually how he was animated, like basically to a T. He looked exactly like this in the scene, so good on you, Dokkan, again, for always trying to keep with the anime accuracy. Looks very, very good, though. Obviously, we have this very cool shot, actually, of um, Zamasu up in the sky. Unfortunately, right, I mean, Dokkan Wall's logo is there, but the skip button <laughs> is uh, kind of doing us a little bit dirty with the placement of this asset here. Maybe they should have put him, like, here or something like that. Or maybe this will look better on like an iPad or something like that where you have a little bit of a bigger screen. But um, he is a little bit cut off there. But it is cool. Obviously, this little bit of perspective with both of them kind of moving um, independently of each other and giving you that sort of like 3D-esque look. Then we have Zamasu lean his head down. I will say this is the one thing in the support memory that I don't like um, in terms of the animation, right? It goes back to Zamasu here. But this change in the head is just so strange. I think it's mostly the hair, to be honest with you. Well, not only does his face get bigger, but it is definitely how the hair looks on a stable body. It's always really awkward when Dokkan changes the head of a character in an animation, but they don't change the body's look. It always ends up looking a little bit janky, but once that moment passes, it looks fine with him leaning down, right? And that asset looks really good. And then obviously he brings his head back up to cry. <laughs> And this looks really good, right? I think that overall, um, this animation... Oh, we'll get to you in a second. Don't worry, Vegito. This animation of him crying is very well done. Um, I will say there maybe could have been one more frame in between. Um, not the tears part. The tears is like exactly how they did in the anime. Like here and here. Um, but to be fair, I'm... Uh, you know, that's basically how it was in the anime. So, you know, again, me nitpicking. But I digress. Um, obviously we have the shot of Vegito. Are you seriously crying? And they did a very good job with this. Obviously it's very, very minimal. Um, you know, it, it's not too much to animate in the scene anyway, right? Um, but it is cool that even so, they still gave Vegito that little bit of like his shoulders kind of sagging down a little bit, 
before he actually speaks. I think that's a nice little touch to really give this animation some more life. And obviously this is just a very funny looking asset in general. And then we have the scene of Zamasu lifting his arms up, which I'm sure is what most people are probably going to forget from the support memory. But I will say it is interesting because they actually focus on like um, his arm first, right? Like they kind of have a shot panning up his arm with the aura flowing like from the tips of his fingers up to his body. Um, but they just show this scene with Samasu um, obviously standing there with this very nice looking aura. But this obviously makes a lot more sense because for a support memory, it can't be too long. And obviously sometimes with these support memories to kind of keep it a little bit more of a condensed animation, they sort of just do a little bit of like reference to it rather than doing like the full scene, right? So I still think that this works perfect, and I mean, obviously, the main juice of this animation is, of course, the part with Zamasu crying and Vegito reacting, so it makes sense that this would just be the little end bit. I'm honestly surprised it didn't just end with Vegito, so hey, the more animation, the better. That was very cool that they even bothered to add that in at the end. Alright, so now we have the Trunks and my support memory. Obviously, this is when they go back to the future at the end of the Future Saga from Dragon Ball Super. This is a very interesting animation, right? Because it starts with them already in the time machine. By the way, I did not remember my wearing this outfit at the end, but I rewatched the scene and this is what she was wearing. So I guess I just completely forgot. Where did she get this coat? I don't know. Maybe it was in Bulma's closet or something like that. But I digress. With this animation, right, the only thing that is a little bit uh, jank... Oops, I did not mean to go so far ahead. Sorry about that. Um, the only thing that is definitely a little bit jank is um, when Mai moves her head. Let me go back to that. When Mai moves her head um, to kind of, like, look up at Trunks, right? I will say this is really cool, by the way. This is a nice detail. First of all, it's cool that the time machine is obviously going, like, kind of out of the support memory before instead of going to that scene and having like a background of the sky right with the support memory kind of flying in the air they actually cut immediately to trunks and my which i think is a pretty cool little detail and I, this has to be intentional because like it looks way too much like this for this to be the case it looks like you're looking from the outside of the time machine and you're looking into the glass right that's kind of why they look a little bit blurry and the dark blue is there before obviously they come into kind of like full color there, right? It's kind of like this shot right here where it kind of looks like it's a little bit of like a gleam off the glass before it leads me to believe that. If that wasn't intentional to kind of give you that, I guess like camera perspective or like what you think is supposed to be that, right? Then shout out to the Dokkan Battle Coding for doing an absolute banger of an animation by accident, but I have a feeling that's what they were trying to implement because that's what it looks like to me. If that's not the case, Good job, though, come that all. <laughs> anyway, this is what I was talking about here with my, where it goes from this shot to this shot. But then again, considering, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is a support memory. So I'm not expecting the same quality of animations as necessarily like a Dokkan Fest. And this type of thing is pretty typical for a support memory. So we have my kind of looking at Trunks. Obviously, Trunks looking up. And I believe this is my saying, let's go back to the future Trunks saying, yeah, this is also a nice shot with obviously him looking at her. Um, with just a little bit of animation in the beginning, and then they cut to Trunks pushing the lever forward with a little bit of a nice bump effect there to kind of just give it a little bit more oomph, right? That's the type of thing that I really like to see in these animations, a little like, right there. It just gives it a little bit more life and kind of makes it feel a little bit more, uh, you know, not only interesting to look at, but obviously a little bit more impactful. So obviously we have the fire expand, right? This, by the way, um, it's very interesting how they cut this. So obviously we have Trunks and Mai flying up, which looks pretty good. Mai leaning over. Bro, they gotta design a better dome for that time machine. I'm telling you, bro, if I was in there, my back would be game over. <laughs> I'd have to be sitting 24-7. But yeah, so we have the whole gang, um, looking up at Trunks and Mai, which is pretty cool. Also, accurate to the scene, I know for the support memory, it's a little bit weird that, um, Pilaf is, like, kind of on the ground. But this is after Pilaf is like, oh, you should take care of the present Trunks, and then Mai, like... Kind of throws peel off over uh her shoulder and he's on the ground with shu kind of like ah what's funny in this scene too shu almost looks like he's smiling in the anime but here it looks like he's a little bit smiling but also like a little bit worried about peel off so it's nice that they kind of like corrected that and look at this ladies and gentlemen most everybody here we'll get to go on in a second most everybody here has a little bit of movement on them right obviously like goku vegeta 
Bulma and Chi-Chi are just kind of standing still, but Krillin is waving, Marin is waving, obviously you have Goten and Trunks waving, right? You have the little bit of the, ah, you know, little bubbles of animation on Shu there, right? It's very nice to see that they actually bothered to animate this scene rather than just having them stand there and be a solid PNG. Very, very nice to see, even in these support memory animations, that they care to put that little bit of extra in. And then we get this shot, right? Which obviously, I'm sure most of you remember this scene from the end of the DBS Goku Black arc, where when Trunks is looking out the time machine window, Gohan flies up with Piccolo, and then Gohan's like, you know, goodbye, Trunks, you know, be well. And, um, you know, he gets like the little flashback to future Gohan. It is a little bit of a shame that not only i just realized this piccolo not even included in this animation i didn't even notice that piccolo's just not here that's unfortunate because he's literally like off to the left or right where gohan is standing it is a little bit of an unfortunate thing that they didn't include that bit where trunks gets like the little like vision of gohan and i don't even mean like the flashback it's just like they kind of show a picture of future gohan over trunks right or i'm sorry future gohan over gohan rather um and it obviously doesn't include Gohan's, like, uh, you know, Trunks, be well, uh, where he kind of, like, lifts his fist up into the air, right? It's literally just Gohan kind of standing there, um, which, to be fair, right, not only am I just glad that Gohan was included in this animation, because they absolutely could have just forgot about him or not included him at all in the animation, but, um, like I was saying before with the crying support memory for the end, for these support memories, a lot of the time, they cut out a lot of the in-between stuff or a little bit of, like, the extra stuff that happens in a scene. Because, obviously, these support memories are supposed to be short, snappy animations, you know, that don't take too long to kind of appear on your screen, right? And, obviously, the more scenes they put in, the more budget they have to do for the support memory as well. So, you know, it makes sense to me that, obviously, they would cut that sort of thing out. But it is still just a little bit unfortunate at the end of the day because, obviously, that would have been cool to see. But, nonetheless... Still glad that Gohan is included anyway. We have this very nice final shot of Trunks and my leaving. Very nicely well done on the job of the asset spinning of the time machine. Little like, you know, extra bits kind of spinning around. Obviously, of Trunks and my waving there. And then we get the full shot of the time machine with both of them flying away. Still waving uh, and the little bit of the spinning bits. With the spinning bits looking really nice and the sparkles to end look very, very good. Yeah, I really like it when they animate stuff like this in Dokkan. I'm always impressed because this is literally just like a bunch of PNGs moving, you know, in tandem with each other layered. And like, if you look at these, right, it looks like that these are like speed lines or something like that that are on there. But these are literally just like the asset just has these lines attached to the PNG, right? You can even see it a little bit on the smaller one, but obviously on the bigger one, you can see these little black lines. I'm always so impressed how they get this to look so good. But I mean, to be fair, I guess it's basically just a slideshow, right? <laughs> it's just a bunch of images moving in tandem. So there you go. That is the brand new support memories that we got with this part of the worldwide celebration. Honestly, these are pretty good. Um, I would put these pretty high on the support memory animation tier list, if I do say so myself. I think that the Zamasu crying one might just be the best one out of the bunch for me personally. However, that also, you know, is kind of helped by the fact that that scene is very simple, right? That's the nice thing about some of these support memory scenes is the scene that they're taking from the characters aren't really doing a lot of movement or they're just talking to each other or something like that. And obviously that works perfectly well for, um, you know, a scene like this, right? Even the trunks in my scene, there is quite a bit going on and they still manage to capture it pretty well. So definitely a big W on these support memory animations. Let me know what you thought about these in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys have to think. I'm so glad that we got all these scenes represented in some way in Dokkan Battle. That is also a very nice thing about, um, you know, these support memories is that because of the support memories, we can actually get a bunch of these scenes represented that may not have a place in a unit's kit of animation. So that is always a very nice sight to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Dokkan Assets out. Peace.